keep his children submissive. See the list? Come back to, uh, there's, there's many in the Bible, they're good lists. And, and if we have, if you want a, a pastor, I'm sure Pastor Vell has a, a list when we have a pastor we're looking for, here's what I'm looking for. Of all these character issues and qualities, this is the list. So I'll show you one more list in Exodus chapter 18. Exodus 18. And Moses is a pastor of a large church, about a million people maybe. And um, his father-in-law, Jethro, is coming to teach him how, how to pastor. And uh, he gives Moses a list. It's a very simple list. Thank you. So here it is in Exodus chapter 18, and um, verse number 17. Moses' father-in-law, his name is Jethro, he said to him, what you are doing is not good. He was working too hard. But that's not our, our subject today. He was working too hard. You and the people with you will certainly wear yourselves out, for the thing is too heavy for you. You're not able to do it alone. Now obey my voice. I'm going to give you some advice. Um, Look at verse 20. Verse 20, when I read this many years ago, I thought, that's my life verse. My life verse. If you're a pastor, this, this would be a good life verse for you. Jethro said, Pastor Moses, here's your job. You teach the statutes and the law. Make them know the way they must walk and what they must do. There's my job. Number one, teach the word. That's my number one job, teach the word. Number two, teach people the way they should walk. How do you be a good husband? How do you be a good pastor? How do you be a good wife? How do you be a good child? How do you be a good employee? How do you be a good citizen? How do you walk out this Christian life? Teach the word, teach the way, and teach the work. Because everybody has an assignment. Not everybody will be a pastor. Not everybody will be a, a, a leader. Some people are servants. And every assignment is important. Everybody has a purpose, a destiny in life. So the list, the list followed, but that's my, my personal calling to teach the word, teach the way, and teach the word. Let's read on. So that's your job, Moses. And now we come down to um, verse number 21. Here's the list. Moreover, look for able men. They've got to be able to do it, right? You got, if you're a pastor, you've got to be able to pastor. You've got to be smart enough. You've got to be uh, able to stand up in front of people. You have to have that leadership quality. You've got to be able. Number two, men who fear God. I, ha I have a respect, a healthy honor and fear for God. And number three, trustworthy. Can I trust this person? And that's the word I'm going to come back to. And then number four, you you don't you won't be bribed. They they they. I think maybe in Philippines too, they do a lot of bribing with the politicians. You can't you can't be bribed. So that's that's the qualities. Able, fear God. So my my ability, my relationship with God. Trustworthy, and, and trustworthy with money. Money is a very difficult issue. And can I trust you with money? That's his list. So the list has to do with the soil. The, the list is the condition of the soil. The soil is your heart. So is your heart trustworthy? And I'm going to use the word integrity. Integrity. Many times in the Bible, God uses that word. Different translations have different uses of the word integrity. But here's, here's the definition. Well, first of all, I'll give you two verses. Um, the first verse is uh, Proverbs 10, 9. Turn your Bible to Proverbs. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, that's good. Wait, wait. Do you mind coming erasing that one more time? Thanks. See, that's a gift. <laughs> erasing boards. Okay, Proverbs, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, 
chapter 10, verse number 9. Now, I understand the different translations change the word, but this translation I use says, whoever walks in integrity walks securely. He who makes his way crooked will be found out. My mother's favorite verse when I was growing up was from Nehemiah. Be sure your sins will find you out. Remember that? God knows. Nobody else knows, but God knows. So this verse says, if you're crooked on the inside, nobody can see it. Nobody can see the weeds. But it'll be found out. It will be revealed. And if it's not revealed here, it'll be revealed in heaven. There's no secrets with God. So, whoever walks in integrity is secure. You're going to be okay. Now, uh, the other verse is Proverbs chapter 2, verse 10. Thanks, honey. Proverbs chapter 2, verse number 7. Um, let's look at verse 6 and 7. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity. He's a shield to those who walk in integrity. So if you have the soil condition, you have integrity, and I'll, I'll tell you what that is in a minute. If you have that, then God will protect you from evil. It's a very important characteristic in the soil. If we don't have it, the plant will eventually die because of the weeds. So here's, here's the definition. Integrity. Here's the, the root. When, when you're defining a word, I'm not sure how Tagalog is, but when you're defining a word in English, you go to the root of the word. And the root of the word is integer. 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 An integer, that, my finger is an integer. That's called an integer. It, it's... It means one. One. And we have the word integrate. Integrate. Now, the word integrate means to make one. To make one. Let me illustrate this. Here, here's my hands. I, I take my hands like this, and I integrate them like this, and I become one. That that's what the word means, to become one. That is disintegrate, that is integrate. So integrate is to make into one. Now, so the other word that we have is disintegrate. Disintegrate. That, that word there describes what the devil does. God integrates, God makes one, the devil disintegrates. That's, if, if there's one job description of God, he brings things together. We use the word reconcile, same word. He brings it together. The devil takes things apart. So that's, that's the definition. It means to make into one. Now, I want to bring application to that in four or five different areas. Perfect pen, that's great. I'm sorry you lost your job. <laughs> so here's, here's what we're going to do four different areas. The integrity, integrity of God, the integrity of self, of man, mankind, the integrity of marriage, mar marriage, the integrity of, um, our, we'll call it maybe salvation, my, my integrity with God, my relationship with God, salvation, and the integrity, uh, what's the fourth one, is the church, the integrity of the church. So I'm going to go through these five very quickly, and uh, then I'll... I'll show you some scriptures. So, we're going to talk about God is one, we are one, 
marriage is one, salvation is one with God, and the church, church is one. That God wants to make us one, the devil wants to separate us, to disintegrate us. That's the, that's the conflict that we're all involved in right now. So let's go through these one at a time. We'll, we'll start with the integrity of God. Everything comes from God, so it's very important that we begin with God. And, and turn to Deuteronomy chapter 6, and verse number 1 to 4. I, I won't read it all, but Deuteronomy 6, 1 to 4, is, the, uh, is one of the most important passages in the Bible. And that passage, you, you know the Jews wear that little thing on their head? Phylactery. Phylactery. You've seen pictures of that little leather box. Inside that leather box is this passage. It's, they have another one on their arm that they wrap around their arm. And uh, that little box, inside that box is this passage right here. It's called the Shema. Shema. And Shema in Hebrew means here. Here. It's kind of like Jesus said, listen, listen. Thanks. So, in this passage, it says, the Lord is one. The Lord is one. Now, in Hebrew, there's two words for one. There's one, if I have one pen, or there's the word uh, compound whole, a compound whole. So an orange is, is made up of pieces, but it's a compound whole. And it's all one together. So God, the word that God uses, the Lord is one, which is the very heart of the Shema, the Lord God is one, means that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one. It's a compound whole. Now, what does the devil do? The devil says, Jesus is not God. He's disintegrating. God says, yes, we're one. We are the Trinity, triune God. The, the devil will say, no, the Holy Spirit is not real. He, he's trying to disintegrate God. So God is one, and everything flows from, from God. Now, I just want to get my scriptures down here, right? My notes are scattered here. So let's, secondly, I'm going to look at the integrity of man. The integrity of man. In 1 Thessalonians 5.23, it says that it's the only place that mentions spirit, soul, and body. We are one. Now, this is where integrity of our lives comes in. If my spirit says one thing, say, say, I'll give you an illustration. This has happened to me many, many years ago, but it, it illustrates what I'm talking about. I, I was in church one morning, and a man, one of our elders, came up to me and says, Pastor Barry, I saw your light on in your office at 6 o'clock in the morning. Boy, you work long hours. Now, I was not there at 6 o'clock. I was sleeping in bed at 6 o'clock. But my light was on because I left it on the night before. So in my heart, I knew that I was not there. But I also know that I work long hours. So I, I didn't say, oh, I wasn't there. I left the light on. I said, yeah, yeah, sometimes I work long hours. It wasn't a lie. But it wasn't integrity. So my body, my mouth, was disintegrated from my spirit. My spirit was saying, tell him the truth. He just left your line up. My mouth said, yes, I work long hours, and I deceived him. That was lack of integrity. So that was at 8.30. The service was going to begin at 9. And I was, in the, I was in the prayer room praying, and God spoke to me. 
He says, Barry, I will not allow you to preach. As we cry. Until you apologize to that man. Uh, you, you can't do that. You can't go into a pulpit with lack of integrity. So I was very embarrassed. And I, and I went up and I said, his name is Lance. And I said, Lance, can I talk to you? And he said, sure. They said, Lance, I, I have to apologize. I'm, I, I was deceptive. And you saw my light on and you thought I was working. I wasn't working. And that's okay, but I deceived you. And I just want to tell you that I just left the light on. I wasn't there. And he said, no, no problem, Barry. That's, that's no problem. But suddenly, my heart, my mouth, and my spirit came into unity. That's integrity. And then I could preach. It was embarrassing. It was humiliating. And that's good. Because the humble are the ones that succeed. And so God will do things to humble us. So when your mouth and your spirit are in disharmony, that, that's why Romans 10, 9, and 10 says, when you... When you Trust in Jesus, your mouth has to say what your heart believes. It has to come into integrity. It has to come into unity together. The heart and the mouth. All the way through the Bible, the heart and the mouth have to agree. So if I'm worshiping, leading the Lord, and uh, my mouth is saying, Oh, hallelujah, praise, praise, praise God. But my heart is far from God. I'm not in integrity. There's a disintegration of my life. I'll give you another example from the Bible. Remember Abraham? He's our father, right? And uh, he was in, um, I forget where he was, Gerar or something, and the king was Abimelech. And Abimelech thought his wife Sarah was very beautiful, right? She was 90 years old and very beautiful. And he wanted her as part of his harem. So, he says, uh, Abraham, is that your wife over there? He says, no, she's my sister, right? In other words, you can have her. She's 90 years old. You can have her for your hair. What a nice husband he was. <laughs> he knew it was wrong, but he was afraid. If he said she's my wife, then he thought the king would kill him and take his wife. So he, he says to Sarah, honey, you need to understand this. I'm just doing this to protect myself. It's okay if I sacrifice you, but I'll protect myself. That's lack of integrity in our leader, our father, Abraham. So then Abimelech, somebody sees them kissing. And uh, are holding hands or making eyes at each other. And, and, and they said to the king, they're married. That's not, that's not a sister. You don't kiss your sister like that. And so the king is very upset. Abimelech, he comes to Abraham and he says, Abraham, I had, I, Abimelech, the sinner, had integrity, but you didn't. And Abraham was very embarrassed, very humiliated. And he said, I'm sorry. And he, he was supposed to be a missionary, but he left in shame because the sinner had more integrity than Abraham had. So that's, that's the issue, is when our heart and our spirit are in unity. Now let's just give you a couple more. Marriage. Let's look at marriage. Genesis chapter 2, the last verse. God says, when I make a man and Adam and Eve, and they leave their father and mother, they cleave to each other, and they become one, one flesh. They become one. See, God wants to make everything one. So husband and wife. So what does the devil do? He wants to disintegrate. He wants to divide us. And, and so he brings division in, in, in marriage and argument and conflict. It's, it's the flesh and the spirit are fighting each other. And, and we all have that flesh. That's the weeds in the soil. And there's this disintegration. We're fighting every day. Every week, every month, we're fighting this flesh and spirit. The flesh wants to disintegrate, and the spirit wants to integrate. So the husband and wife are one. Now, let's come. I'm going to skip right to the, to the end. We, we are one with Jesus. He's one with us. The devil wants to separate us from Jesus. But I want to come to the church. The church. Because we are a family. You're Filipino, Filipinas, I, I'm Canadian. But we're brother and sister. We're part of the same family. Same mother, same father. 
We're the, we're the wife, we're the bride of Christ. I want to show you a passage in 1 Corinthians 11 that you know very well, and I'm going to conclude with this. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians 11. And this is a passage that you may read every month in church because it's communion. But you may not know what God is saying here. Now the problem in 1 Corinthians 11 is there's disintegration in the church. There's jealousy. And the rich people are eating here and the poor people are eating there and they weren't integrated. There's no integrity in the church. So Paul is very upset. He says, I'm very angry. I'm very upset. Because the devil has succeeded in dividing you. There's gossip going on. There's envy going on. There's jealousy going on. There's classes going on. Upper class and lower class. It's, it's not the way the church should be. Here's what he says. Um, come down to uh, verse number 27. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. What is an unworthy manner? The context is disintegration. If there is disunity, if there is disintegration in the group, it's unworthy. If there's jealousy, if there's gossip, if there's competition in the church, that's unworthy because that's the context of the scripture. It's about the church not being one. There's no integrity in the church. So if you drink in an unworthy manner, then we are guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let a person examine himself. That does not disqualify unbelievers from taking communion. Because remember, Judas is taking communion with Jesus. Jesus invites Judas to take communion. It's not a matter of being an unbeliever. It's a matter of believers being disintegrated in disunity. So Jesus invited Judas, come, share, break bread with me. And he was a sinner. So communion is okay for anybody, but for the church, we need to examine ourselves as a church. Are we, in, are we integrated? Or do we have integrity? Is there any jealousy? Is there any gossip? Is there any pride? Is there any competition? That's unworthy. Now, look what he says. He says, you'll be guilty of the body and the blood. You're, you're as guilty as Judas is. You're as guilty as the Romans were. Let a person examine himself. So eat of the bread and drink of the cup. If anyone eats and drinks without discerning the body, what's the body? The body is church. We're talking about the church here, right? Corinthians is all about the church. If you haven't understood how the body works as one, then we're in trouble. If there's competition, if there's pride, you haven't discerned the body, then you you get judgment on yourself when you take communion. That's why, and he's explained this, that's why many of you are weak and ill and have died. He's not talking about people, he's talking about churches. Do you know of any weak churches? A weak church is a church that does not reproduce. Do you know the average church in the world is 70 people, 70 people, and it just sits there, 70 people, because one pastor handles 70, it's not reproducing. That's a weak church. Do you know that 85% of churches do not reproduce? They are either staying still or they're declining. That's a weak church. Now he tells us the reason that these churches are not growing, they're not reproducing, is because there's disintegration going on. They haven't examined themselves. There's something going on, there's conflict going on that is unresolved. Many are weak and many churches are sick. Do you, do you know that in the United States there's 35,000 churches every year that close? They're sick. Why are they sick? Because there's disintegration going on. And many of you are dead. Do you know many dead churches? They, they come to church, they sing the songs, but there's death, there's no life. It's like a person that has passed child during an age. Their body is dead. They're not producing anymore. There's no salvations. There's no baptisms. There's no new life. Not, not planting churches. The reason that churches, 85% of the churches in the world are plateaued or declining is right here. Lack of integrity. That's what it's all about. So it begins with God. Of course, God's an in, in, integrated. 
the church, the body, the husband's wife, and the devil wants, and he's doing a good job. The devil's doing a good job. Dividing marriages, dividing families, dividing people. But integrity is key character issue. That's the soil. That's the characteristic of the soil that either makes growth or stops growth. So let's just stop for a minute. I'm going to pray for you, and then I'll, I'll leave you. We're going to examine our own heart. I can't examine you. I don't want to examine you. I examine myself. How's my heart? Is there, is there any jealousy? Is there any competition? Is there any pride? Is there any criticism? Is there anybody I need to apologize to? Because there's lack of integrity. That's great. Father, this is a very serious issue. <coughs> And uh, you've taught us well from the Word. But sometimes my heart has become hard and I haven't heard that, Lord. And I, I know that pride comes in. I know that uh, criticism of other churches or other pastors comes in. Gossip, envy of churches that are bigger or, or thriving. Father, would you forgive me? Please forgive me, Lord. Wash, wash me clean. I want my soil in my heart to be healthy. And I ask that for all of us, Lord. We just, will you forgive us? Will you wash us in the blood of Jesus? And, and, and make us one. Make us one, Lord God. If there's any weeds that are in my heart or our hearts, Lord God, I pray that you would help us destroy the flesh. Die, die to ourselves. Forgive us and wash us clean that we may be one and then be what you called us to be, not, not a weak church, not a sick church, and certainly not a dead church, but a strong church that is reproducing for the glory of God. I ask that in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I, I don't know what, if you want to sing a song or not. I'm not really a singer, but uh, how about why don't we just sing We Are One of the Bond of Love and whoever is going to follow up I need help though. That's not what I mean. Let's stand up together and sing We're One in the Bond of Love. And then whoever wants to take over. Maybe one of you worship leaders can come and help me. Do you know that song? He goes. You know the words? It's an old song. We are one in the bond of love. We are one in the bond of love. We have joined our spirits to the spirit.